Welcome to The Lift with Sheila Robinson Kiss. Come on in. There's always a special place set aside for you here where you can relax, kick up your heels, pour yourself a nice refreshing drink, and prepare to be lifted and soar. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Always wonderful to connect with you. I hope wherever you are today, you are feeling lifted, you're feeling grounded, and you are focused on what is working and what is beautiful in your life. That's how we hold the momentum that propels us forward. I want to jump right in um, to today's message, why some people just, no matter what, they have to be right they can never be wrong. And I wanna talk about how this impairs uh, your life, your work, and all aspects in between. I love the quote by Peter McIntyre, and he says, confidence comes not from always being right, but confidence comes from not being afraid to be wrong. And there is a distinct difference there. And there are those walking among us, you can call it a stubborn refusal, a hesitation, a trepidation, what have you. They don't want to be wrong, but in either case, it is a sign of arrested development. And I would refer you to the video I did last week on arrested development. There is a a component to that mental positioning that is inherently um, immature, because when you Uh, bump it up against the reality. We are evolving. We are changing. Mistakes will be made. We can change our opinions. We can completely change who we are in a span of a year, in a span of five years. Some people, a single incident, or they'll get a nugget of information, and it's such a game changer that it profoundly changes uh, who and what they are. So people who can never be wrong, ha- they have blocked themselves out and walled themselves out to vital information and assuming responsibility uh, for, for their positions. So I want to share a story with you that really perfectly illustrates um, the damaging effects of just insisting uh, 24-7, 365, uh, that you're right. I was sitting group of four people um, trying to come to a consensus on how to move a project forward. One of the individuals in the group um, started uh, quoting some information stats on a report, and I knew it was incorrect. Uh, the other people around the table knew it was incorrect, easy enough to pull it up on Google. And this individual kept, he wouldn't let it go. He wouldn't let it go. So he If it's easy enough to pull it up on Google, that's what we did. And even faced with the hard data in front of him, he held on to this and even extended extended this um, wrong thinking. He extended it into something turned into a flat out lie. He said, well, there's a different report. There's a different body of work. Give me a couple days to pull it up. There was no different report or different body of work. It was his ego. It was his ego talking and he couldn't stop himself and he couldn't be wrong. And it was an attempt um, likely um, to impress. I want to look strong, X, Y, Z. It did the absolute opposite. It did the opposite. Many people have that mentality, uh, that perfectionistic mentality It is weak. They they, um, couple being wrong with a sign of weakness and nothing could be further from the truth. The uh, studies, and you can check these out on Google, study after study tells us that leaders, uh, individuals, moms, dads, brothers, friends, uh, however, wherever you position in your life, when you show vulnerability, um, the ability to correct yourself, the ability to be wrong, um, the ability in some instances uh, to be vulnerable, that makes you more relatable. That um, connects people to you. Um, it builds a sense of trust. Uh, yeah, this is another human being having a human experience. And I want to say this and be clear about it. There is a Grand Canyon there, there, there's just a grand canyon, a huge difference between being incorrect 
or having the wrong information from time to time or making a mistake and being incompetent. There is a grand canyon. Show me one successful person, truly successful, not pretending to be successful, but a truly successful person from the inside out who does not have stories upon stories of, I had to go back, I had to correct myself, I had to get advice on this situation. So one of the great perils of allowing yourself to sit in this positioning of, I can't be wrong, is you don't have the natural offshoots, the natural opportunity to grow and expand. Um, being wrong, the flip side of that is the opportunity to, to get corrected, to have the right information. You know, my daughter, she's six years old. There's some things, situation last year, she said, you know, mommy, we can bring these mugs. I said, no, that doesn't sound right because you've been bringing your thermos. She said, I'm telling you, we can bring these mugs to school. And I told her she was wrong. Well, let's ask the teacher. Let's do that. Well, Miss Kiss, yes, we did ask them to bring in a spare mug sweetheart, I'm so sorry. Mommy stands corrected. You were right. I'm so sorry about that. And when we are wrong, it is best to take ownership, take ownership of it, apologize, move immediately into the space of correction. What new information can I gather? Number one, to ensure that I'm not wrong about this again. And number two, would there be more information here that would allow me to grow in other areas? I have seen uh, relationships destroyed, relationships destroyed because someone doesn't have the ego strength to just be wrong, to say, I'm sorry, to learn a new way to communicate, to learn a new method of existing inside of that relationship. It happens all the time. It happens all the, all the time. And it begs another question. Would you rather be balanced, happy, at peace, or would you rather be right? Because often being right carries a heavy price tag carries a very heavy price tag. So my hope is that uh, this message will um, really spark everyone to kind of sit and think, how, how do I handle, how do I handle it when I'm confronted with new information, when I could potentially be wrong, or someone may have refreshed information that, that can help me? Am I defensive to that? Am I open? Do I automatically look at myself as a failure? Let me do some tweaking and let me do some adjusting so that I'm positioning myself in as much as I possibly can for success. And folks, I'm here to tell you, you know, the, the school of hard knocks has taught me a long time ago. You know, I used to uh, delve in that area too. Oh, you know, I, I have to uh, always prove myself confident and stand upright. And I try as much as I can to take my walk in excellence um, I'm always striving and I want to grow and be better and learn. However, I have had to conclusively uh, you know, come to the conclusion that part of that, part of that is understanding that you will fall. You will, there will be failures. There will be gaps of information that are missing. And what you don't do is just reach and grasp, put, you know, information in there that's not valid. And what you don't do is have such an exterior where you're leading with your ego that you can't drop it and say, yeah, you know, you're right. Your idea is better. How can I get more information? I was headed in the wrong direction there. Though It's a muscle. And the more you use it, the more you use it, the easier it gets in expansion, tremendous expansion follows. So thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful. I've got your back and I'll be coming back at you with some more great content. And please don't forget to subscribe.